This video uh, is a demonstration on how to configure Kydera uh, DMR uh, handled uh, transceiver, the DM880. Um, basically, you need to install the programming uh, application. Um, there's a couple of versions. The version I'm using in this video is 3.2, and I might show you in another video how to install it. Uh, basically, you will connect the USB cable between the uh, laptop or your computer and uh, the Kydera transceiver. And uh, then you'll start the Kydera uh, programming application, which looks like this. And uh, uh, this is how it looks like uh, when it uh, opens up. And uh, the thing that you need to look at here is to be to see if it will connect to the actual uh, radio. Uh, the radio needs to be on. Uh, you will go to the COM section. You need to select a specific uh, serial COM driver for it. Uh, sometimes you have to press refresh. In this case, you see it's jumped to nine. Uh, just one tip. Originally, when I did this the first time, it had a COM of about 46 or 64 somewhere there quite a high port I had to go into the computer um, uh, drivers menu and remap it to a lower port so it didn't want to work on the higher ports and I might show you how to do that as well but from, for this video I'll just show you how to connect and you press the connect button and you can then either uh, download the configuration uh, from the radio, the existing configuration and uh, that's what I'm doing now, so it's reading um, uh, all the data from the radio uh, configuration and I'll show you uh, some of the settings that you need to configure uh, the first time you get the radio um, let's quickly go through all the menus, so equipment information, it's just some uh, version software and so on, uh, version date, um, you can actually upgrade, upgrade the, the firmware as well, but um, uh, that's not really necessary, um, there's not really any bugs that I could find at this stage, uh, this equipment ID, um, uh, this is just uh, on some default volumes for your uh, sound and keypads, uh, basic information. This is what you need to change. You can have to register on the, uh, the DMR uh, system. Uh, I'll send the, put a URL uh, at the end of this video where you have to register. Once you've registered, you will be allocated an ID, uh, a radio ID number, and you'll have to enter it here. So please don't use this uh, number that's in that's in here. Um, this is just some general information. I don't know if you can change anything here. No, although you can. So um, th these are defining the the keys on the left and right of the actual transceiver. Uh, what functionality uh, uh, is allowed to be used with it? Um, so there is the actual key there. You can actually select what functionality it must uh, do. Uh, and so on and so on. So you can click it to to maybe s bring up the list of uh, call signs of people that you know that you put in a desk book or whatever the case might be. Um, that's the keys uh, menus. Uh, this section is uh, allows you to disable or enable menus on on the device itself. Maybe it's it's a bit crowdy for you and this functionality that you'll never use uh, you'll just disable those menus for instance if you don't use the GPS um, or you don't have the GPS option in the transceiver and just disable the GPS uh, menus and, and so on so you can actually enable disable functionality if you just wanted to use it as an analog radio you can disable the the digital uh, menus or vice versa so there's a lot of uh, flexibility from that point of view so this is where you configure that uh, contacts this is where you would add your uh, contacts the call signs in your address book and you'll see uh, there's a whole list of people that's already on on my uh, my device and with the specific contact uh, uh, contact numbers which is those unique numbers that I said to you uh, which was registered 
and then you have to tell it what kind of uh, 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 call it is. Is it a direct uh, call? Is it a group call? Group call gets configured on repeaters most of the time, so you can link multiple. What they normally do, they would link multiple repeaters, and then if you define that group, you define those group of repeaters. So you, if you listen to, for instance, uh, the mark WW, you would listen to all the repeaters in the mark WW group. And that's all defined on the website. Uh, I'll put the URL also at the bottom where you can get all those details. So you can have groups, you can have individual calls, and so on. So um, uh, you'll see there is uh, LCL, which is a South African repeater. Uh, um, there's a couple of other repeaters I think I've defined at the bottom. But that's basically what this uh, this uh, contact list is. Uh, DMR services. This is just some timeouts and uh, for all kinds of uh, configurations, call alerts, tones, how long it must alert, how it must alert you, and all those kind of things. Um, then you've got uh, common messages. You can add, for instance, your own common message. Uh, I am in meeting. And that gives you an option to send a quick uh, reply to somebody if they might call you or whatever the case might be. It's quite a nice feature. Most um, mobile cell phones have these features as well. Scan list. Uh, this is quite important. Uh, it's something that you need to define. So you have multiple lists. Let's say you want the radio to scan for activity on the repeaters. You will actually define which repeaters you want to uh, uh, scan in so I've got all the South African repeaters in list one so you'll see the options there um, zones I'll show you, uh, show you where you define the zones later on but basically you will uh, link uh, specific repeaters or areas in specific zones and then you can scan or listen for them so this is all the worldwide stuff I've got in um, channel two and three and all the South African stuff in channel one five and six but I'll show you where you define that as well so that's a list, <coughs> these the groups, I remember I spoke about uh, in the contact list about the groups, so this, this is where you would link up multiple repeaters um, in, your, in your groups so that you can uh, scan for them, or you could uh, only listen to areas of interest, there might be the repeaters in South Africa, you're not interested in the other ones. Um, uh, then you've got, uh, that was the scan uh, list we've done, uh, receive groups we've done, alarm list. Uh, in fact, I haven't really used this, so I'm not 100% sure how it works, but I think you can actually set up um, the alarm type, must it actually ring? I think, I'm not sure, let's see what options is available there. Uh, prohibit, silent, silent ring, voice, okay, so there's a couple of options, I still need to go and uh, see how that works. Um, then on this zone set, this is quite important. So on the screen, uh, you can have multiple modes to put the radio in multiple modes. You can have a DMR mode, analog mode, this is for normal analog repeaters or local uh, communication. The specific radio is a UHF radio, so you can set up the normal UHF repeaters in here. And then simplex, if you want to actually talk to somebody simplex. This is where you define the zones. Remember I mentioned earlier in a scan list that you could actually define different zones. So you'll see that uh, here's the local South African repeaters and the details that you have to enter here. So you link those repeaters to the zones. I'll make this file, this configuration file available so you don't have to type in all these details. You just load it and change your ID of your specific radio and uh, everything should uh, work normally. So that's zone 1 and zone 2 is all the analog repeaters in South Africa, it's all the ones here um, that you put at the bottom and you can even do more zones, uh, the others are uh, simplex if you want to and you can even define more zones but in this case I think that's about what you can do in South Africa. Once you've defined that uh, and you're happy with everything you can just uh, write and it will send uh, uh, the information to the radio. That's basically it. Um, I'll just show you. The, I want to send it. They send it to the radio. 
and then I'll show you a different um, video on how all this information and where it sits in the menus of the transceiver but for now this is how you configure the radio it's almost done what will happen once it's uh, uploaded at all the data successfully you will see that the uh, Kydera transceiver will uh, reboot uh, just uh, give it some time uh, don't just try and switch it off immediately after you've uploaded the uh, the configuration give it uh, I think two or three minutes you uh, if you keep watching it you'll see it will automatically starts rebooting and once it comes back up uh, it should have all the new configuration you can then unplug your USB cable and everything should be done and then have fun with your new radio